Hi, I'm Sherry Henley with Business Over Coffee. It's great to be with you today and to be with this great panel of professionals that we have here with us today. I would like to welcome Carolyn Bindle of FashionAcademy.biz. Yes. Also, Deborah Norwood, Laughter Lawyer. Barbara Bradley of The Commercial Appeal. That's located in Memphis, Tennessee. Very large paper. It's been around a very long time. Yes, it has. And you've been there 30 years. Yes, I have. I've been there 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look good to have been there 100 years. So we are so happy to have you on the set with us today and as a panelist, a professional panelist to contribute to this look good, feel good segment that we are going into. So stay right where you are. We are going to cover a lot of ground today about how we look on the outside and also how we feel on the inside. with you in the look good segment of this show and how do you know what type of makeup people should have on, what type of colors they should wear. Uh, take us on that journey. Well we take two things into consideration. One, obviously your skin tone mm -hmm. and two, your personality because mm -hmm. somebody who's a dramatic is going to do three or four eyeshadows. Somebody who's a natural, you're going to do good to get them to do one. Right. And so you just have to know those little things and then you just it just pulls together very easily once you do that. And neutral shades are always great. So <laughs> neutral works for any neutral color? Neutral works for anyone, any color and, and any okay. skin tone. And uh, sometimes a neutral may not work as well for somebody, but we can always you know, kind of make it work. But sure. that's what we do whenever we look at someone. And the reason you got to bring personality into it is that feel good part. You know, you can do a, a, a complete makeover on someone, and if it's not in their personality, they are never going to replicate that makeover, and they're never going to feel, in fact, they're, they're not even going to feel great when they're. Yes. at the end of that makeover. So right. you've got to have it within their personality. You can't take people that, out of their realm. That's a great point. Deborah. you have mentioned before about how people will put on a certain jacket and they'll act a certain way. Can you tell us that story? Sure. There's some very um, strong studies done through positive psychology that mm -hmm. talk a lot about the um, neuropsychology of enclosement or empowerment through clothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, a recent study has um, people wearing a doctor's coat and working on math and other, you know, left brain activities. And they found that while they were wearing the doctor's co uh, coat, they could concentrate better. Mm -hmm. And they actually had, you know, increased attention span. Then in the other test subject group, they were told that it wasn't a doctor's coat, it was a painter's coat. And those who were wearing the same white coat, notice the very same white coat, uh -huh. uh, their perception that they were wearing the painter's coat actually affected the study and their attention levels dropped. So there is a lot to be said about the empowerment of what you're wearing. Yes. The clothing, the clothing does influence you depending on your attitude, what your brain is receiving when you're wearing the clothing. Well, we've often heard that perception is as real as reality, and that's very true even in the way that we feel about ourselves. One of the statements that I like to use is what you see is what they get. So the way you see yourself is the way I'm going to see you. Now, I see you, Barbara, as a professional that's been, you've had a lot of longevity, stability, and a lot of years in the fashion world. Tell us what you know as a professional about the look good segment of fashion? Well, uh, people ask me why is fashion important and mm -hmm. I hear that a lot of answers uh, that fashion gives people status uh, and that's true mm -hmm. and uh, that young girls dress beautifully to attract boys and of course they do. Sure. Um, and it shows that we're part of a group or if you're a preppy or a skateboarder, okay. <laughs> right. 
But I think none of those things really carry through all through our lives or I don't think that's really it. I think uh, that people have a need to renew themselves. I think we have a need to shed our feathers. I like that. So constant evolution. Yes. You're constantly evolving into someone else as you grow more mature. Very good. Very good. Uh, fashion is forward thinking and when we dress fashionably we show uh, our energy and our enthusiasm and yes. our optimism uh, to others and to ourselves. I like that. Tell us, there's, there's synergy in this room right now, so I would like to know how that came about. We have fashion professionals right here. And Deborah, where you tie into that is you and Carolyn are partners in business. Well, I'm her attorney. Okay. We've, been, we've yes. been friends for a long time. And you're uh, my attorney as well. Well, <laughs> I'm on your advisory committee. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, and I'm, I'm very delighted to come on board to Business Over Coffee. I believe that, sincerely, I'm saying this with all sincerity, I believe you'll be on the Wall Street Journal and and uh, New York Times well, you know, sometime you. in the near future. I can just thank see them you. focusing on this company, all the potential that it brings. I appreciate Carolyn that. mentioned something about personality and color. Uh -huh. What I enjoy about Fashion Academy and what we have to offer individuals is a very, very scientifically based um, color panel system, mm -hmm. you know, the determining cards. And when she talks about being able to determine people's colors, she actually is talking from a semi-scientific perspective as well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so I got to meet Carolyn. We were very interested in the process that this uh, company is going through. Uh, Fashion Academy has great potential and is, um, is, is reaching international dimensions it's, I was as going well. to say it's international. Yes, it's we have consultants all over the world. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn has been teaching people exactly what to do and I'm one of them because when she met me I was a schizophrenic. I either knew how to overdress or I just was as sloppy as can be and she's got horror stories about me and how I dressed and things that happened to me because of well, my Well you look beautiful both of you compliments of Marva Ballard. Yes. M.G. Ballard. Yes indeed. Uh, an outstanding designer uh, here in Memphis Tennessee actually. I would like to segue into how Carolyn contributes to the fashion aspect of the commercial appeal and how that connection was made, how that synergy was made between the two of you. Well, you know Carolyn has a makeover column. Yes. Uh, but I've known Carolyn much longer than that and I'm very familiar with uh, the Ca Fashion Academy uh, color analysis system and I know uh, ladies out there that you years ago uh, uh, when you tried color analysis it was pretty uh, it was a pretty creaky system and uh, was pretty limiting uh, that's so different now it was completely revised a number of years ago and it really works it's great it's easy to use and uh, if you know what colors you wear uh, that's a huge help in, in, in getting the most out of your wardrobe you'll wear it much you know, you'll wear your things longer and they'll coordinate better and you won't make mistakes. And, and it does work. So how does Carolyn contribute to, I know she's an, uh, an actual contributor to your fashion segment, but tell us what she brings to the table for the individuals that are featured there. Uh, well, Carolyn does her makeover column, and uh, she, they, you, generally the women there are just clueless about what they're uh -huh. uh, supposed to be doing. They have no sure. idea what colors they wear, what, what styles flatter their figures, uh -huh. and uh, uh, Carolyn, does a, Carolyn does a great job not just of making them look better, but she pays uh -huh. attention to what their style is. Uh -huh. She doesn't put people in clothes that they may look nice, yes. but they're not going to wear. Yes. That's, that's so important. And that segues right into the feel-good segment of this show, Business Over Coffee. I'm Sherry Henley, founder of Business Over Coffee International. I'm so glad you've tuned in to watch us today on this feel-good, look-good segment. Now, let's go to the feel-good segment. And we can look great, walk out, and have a low self-esteem. There was a time in my life where if I didn't have makeup on, I wasn't going to walk out of the house. Now, I don't very often now, but I will say that I feel good enough about myself on the inside that I do not feel that makeup defines me. I only believe that makeup will actually accentuate a few things. Uh, but let's talk about that, about how that is actually birthed in someone, that security factor on the inside. I mean, from the very beginning, we're, we're given cues about who we are and what we are by the way we're treated and what we were wearing from the mm -hmm. beginning 
You know, children. It, it, children are wonderful because you can dress them any way right. you want, and then by the time they become teenagers, you oh, have absolutely my no control whatsoever. Yes, my, <laughs> my children, <laughs> they get so angry at me when they look at old pictures. Because <laughs> I dress them in these flashy suits, my son, and, and my daughter had all these bows, and now they don't want that. No, so. and I love what Barbara said. It's an evolution. People yes. are evolving. They're trying to define themselves. They're trying to find themselves. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I found as attorney over watching for, throughout all these years, these makeovers, you know, I was always fascinated by the people who actually, you know, found themselves through the makeovers and those who mm -hmm. really never knew who they were and therefore couldn't stay with it. Mm -hmm. And so I started investigating a little bit into, you know, the, the study of stress coping, identity, neuropsychology of, mm -hmm. of, of, of laughter. And, you know, I'm a member of the Positive Psychology Association. And together, Carolyn and I have created a a good relationship of color and laughter. Mm -hmm. We've learned that uh, professionals have been taught to grim up to look professional. Um, in my era, you know, women had to look more manly. You had to wear a suit with a little bit of a mm -hmm. fake tie and that mm -hmm. made you important and you right. fell into the business world that way. Um, and we've been taught that to be businesslike and professional, we have to be grim. And we've robbed a lot of people of their identity by removing laughter and removing color from them sure. and therefore they're very uncomfortable as professionals their stress and coping mechanisms are rising to unprecedented proportions and yes. they've lost the inner clown or the child the in inner them. clown did you bring the your red clown. nose oh I've got my red <laughs> nose but you know I have to warm up professionals before I ever wear that thing oh, but okay. yeah yeah we have to we have to become childlike and there's a wonderful expression that says you know, uh, we have no choice in growing old, but um, growing up is optional. I like that. <laughs> that that's a great, a great segue into talking about how we all have an inner child in us. And in fact, today as we were coming onto the show, I walked in and I was talking with Shelly Bauer and I was just laughing and giggling, and I said, you know, I'm having a girl moment. And she said, let's have a girl moment. And so those girl moments are important, so make sure you have those. One of the things I want to point out is this, and this has to do with both Barbara Bradley, Deborah Norwood, and Carolyn Bindle, who you are one of the featured um, individuals in here with fashionacademy.biz. This is Beverly Borick, our professional boost intern at Business Over Coffee International. And uh, tell us what you did with Beverly. Well, Carolyn. she has, she's been one of those women that was, you know, stayed home, took care of the kids, mm -hmm. raised the children. Uh, and, you know, I did the same thing. And you mm -hmm. get yourself into kind of a, I don't want to say a rut, but a, a fashion rut, um, because every <clears throat> all extra goes to the kids, all extra goes to the house, and all extra goes to you know the husband who is out in the right. work, and so you kind of fall back. Right. Well, they're at the point now where they're empty nesters, and so she wanted to embark on a little dream of hers of doing jewelry, and she would have this beautiful, beautiful jewelry. And the clothes never matched the jewelry, right. never matched the and jewelry. Her jewelry and her great. jewelry, jewelry is great, beautiful, adornment. beautiful. Yes. And so you asked, you were like, "Is there any way possible?" Mm -hmm. And I was so excited because <laughs> in the back of my mind, we had mm -hmm. kind of even already somebody else had submitted her, which is really kind of really? funny. Really interesting. And um, and said, you know, she's got to have an artistic look mm -hmm. about her. We yes. got to get. This, right. this artsy look and, and she's got this, this personality that's down inside that right. is ready to come out and yes. even the outfit that she put on whenever uh, Vera, our re certified retail fashion yes. uh, consultant, uh, brought out the outfit, she you know, took one look at it and she thought, oh, this is big, this is bulky, I don't know about this and she put it, it on and, yeah, and she came out of the dressing room going, oh, I, I can can't we, do this. Can we bring the cameras in on this? And then she went over to the mirror, and as she started dancing in front of the mirror, Vera and I looked at other and said, oh, yeah, she doesn't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things about this is it says, no fuss look for new creative venture. And the creative venture that she has, you just explained, and it's her jewelry collection. Mm -hmm. And so I admire how, first of all, you saw something in Carolyn 
that uh, brought oh, Carolyn yeah. to the table, which is that right there is a story in itself. That was one of the best phone calls I ever got. Yes, <laughs> yes. You saw something in Beverly. But first, before you could do this for Beverly Boric, Barbara Bradley had to see something in you. So tell us what you saw in Carolyn that brought her to the table of fashion. Well, for one thing, I saw her talent. Uh, look, uh, would you buy jewelry from a woman who looked like that? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I mean, before you even look at the jewelry, right. you know, yeah, I, right. I'm not. I, I, sure. You know, I want to see something from her that expresses yes. her artistic sense and that right. she knows what she's doing. Right. I will buy jewelry from someone who woman who Absolutely. looks like that. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yes, very much so. <laughs> so it's a, you know, fashion has uh, appearance. It has so many. Uh, it's relevant in so many ways, you know. People do need to pay attention. Um, yes. I just knew how good Carolyn was. We've worked right. together a long time, uh -huh. um, and um, I knew she could make these women look better. Right. <laughs> and, and, so, and you know, yes. feeling better about themselves because when we did the interview in the "Look Good, Feel Good" segment mm -hmm. of Your True Colors Image Radio, yes, which is on Blog Talk on Mondays, yes, at uh, with Business ten o'clock BOCI yes. Talk and Radio. Carolyn's mm -hmm. just uh, launched her new Image Radio show. And you have a I have the look, look good, good feel segment good. in that particular show. So and I was really blessed to be interviewed by by Beverly by some fortuitous mm -hmm. event. You weren't able to do it. Beverly interviewed me, mm -hmm. and we talked a lot about I, at that point as a as a I'm a gelatologist, which means I study the science of laughter, and uh, <laughs> and I'm a member of the World Laughter Tour. And one of the things that I do is I help uh, professionals de-stress, learn a little bit about coping mechanisms and uh, understanding themselves. But I help them laugh through non-humorous methods. Mm -hmm. But then we really get down to the business of being mindful and having some mindsets mm -hmm. throughout the week, which are called good-hearted living habits. One of them is forgiveness. So we started talking about forgiveness on the radio show, and she started bringing out how people used to laugh at her when she was a child. Mm -hmm. How people mocked her, how she laugh had a stutter. At, at yes. her. At Big her. difference. Big difference. You know, there's, there's mm -hmm. a massive difference between toxic laughter and mm -hmm. compassionate laughter, mm -hmm. and all of us have experienced it. Mm -hmm. She had experienced a lot of toxic laughter in her life, mm -hmm. and she'd had a lot of people ruin her self-esteem. So that by the time she becomes this creative, artistic person who now enters into the business world, mm -hmm. you know, she had to go through a transformational yes. side to her and what we try to do with therapeutic laughter and mm -hmm. good-hearted living is give people transformational attitudes about mm -hmm. stress. She had already captured the most important one, which was forgiveness. Forgiving her past, forgiving herself, forgiving the people who had hurt her, and letting go of it so that she could become a new human being. So forgiveness is actually found in one of our good-hearted living principles that we have to be mindful of. Okay, so that's a, part of, that's a part of our look good. Yes. Then. So and if we good. are unforgiving, then that's going to show on our oh, face yeah. and yeah. in the way we carry ourselves. Uh, you know, the psychology behind that is it's very amazing. interesting. Would you take us through uh, maybe a one-minute segment of de-stressing? One minute segment of de-stressing. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, for one thing, I, I talk a lot to high school students. You know, they're always sitting there trying to do the Facebook pages, you know. Yes. And and a lot of it is mating habits. We're all trying to, you know, attract the other sex mm -hmm. and trying to have us all feel good. So right. I tell them that Facebook uh, has face recognition strategies. It's not a one minute segment. I better narrow it down. But Facebook has face that's recognition, right. which is a which is pretty much an imitation of the fusiliform that's in our brain. And the fusiliform in our brain can recognize something called the Duquesne smile. The Duquesne smile is an authentic smile. an authentic smile. Okay. Uh, and Duquesne was a, a, a scientist who did autopsies in the eighteen mm. hundred and he, you know, did all these autopsies to find out the muscles in the face and what makes a real smile. So when you have a true Duquesne smile, and this happens to you when you go to the grocery store, you're walking along and somebody kind of smiles. <laughs> um, there we go. Where is the chocolate, by the way? <laughs> We're having a true attention deficit moment here, girls. <laughs> and chocolate is very important in good-hearted living, by the way. <laughs> the Duquesne smile, let's go back to that. I tell these kids, you want to be on Facebook, you want to have a good smile, 
let's do a real Duquesne smile, the kind that makes when you're walking in the store or somewhere and someone smiles at you at 380 some feet away, your little lips kind of curl up automatically. Why? Because you know they're not threatening you. It's a real smile. How do we do that? One minute advice, do this. Just do this okay. for a whole minute. <laughs> That's not very real. <laughs> it's not real. That's not real. <laughs> okay, notice okay. what's happening though. Notice what's happening. You're it, your face if is you adjusting it, to it? Your face is adjusting to it. Your mind is getting the mind-body connection. If you uh -huh. really do it for an entire minute, by the time you're through, you are going to have a genuine smile and your eyes are going to match that smile. So when you do your Facebook wow. picture, you don't have this sad eyes and this grin. You've got <laughs> yes. this genuine, attractive smile, which our mating habits show. We, we see, we look, we like, mm -hmm. we realize that we're attracted to one another, and it's genuine. Yes. So many kids right now on Facebook are losing it by going and clicking and not realizing that their eyes show the true pain that, that they're that's under. That's a really good point. No, I, I never, I, I just, well you always say smiling with your eyes. Yes. I you, realize that it takes a little while for that to catch up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well it actually shows. Our brain shows really knows when we're really smiling or not. Exactly. So it can be a smile from the mouth or a smile from the heart really that's right. is how I would phrase it because personally speaking. Um, I grew up in a pastor's home mm -hmm. and we were taught that you know once you hit the stage, play the piano, sing, whatever you're doing, Smile. you put your game Smile. face on <laughs> regardless of what's going on. Uh, but the but the thing is, you can do that, but people can actually tell. I've seen photos of myself where I'm smiling, and my eyes are sad. Yes. So, you and what really I see have, Carolyn do, the point there. what I see Carolyn do, she brings out the real individual. She uses their real personality. Uh -huh. She brings them out, and she doesn't change them. If you look at all these what not to wear and these horrible things, where they take all your wardrobe, everything you love, <laughs> yes, and, and they, they tear it away from you, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and they and they and they rip you away. You know, and your right. whole soul is bared before I don't know how many thousands of millions of people in, on television. And, right. and you're told, you're not good. You're not likable. You wear that? Right. You know, I mean, think about it. Think about that soul-wrenching, mm -hmm. non-validating thing that they do. On the other hand, they wear something. They know they're a natural. I'm a natural. She's got stories of me. I had to, I had to buy something for Senator Sasser. And I was wearing a poncho. My kid didn't have his had a diaper mm -hmm. and no shirt on. And I was with a gypsy, okay, a real okay. live Roman A gypsy. When we go into uh -huh. Dillard's in the silver department, okay. of course we're being followed by the <laughs> security, you know, security people. <laughs> <laughs> and I finally have to call my husband Politically and say, correct here, <laughs> saying, "Honey, <laughs> honey, I, I I think they're trying to arrest me or something." What did my husband tell me? My classic husband. What are you wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> There we go. People judge us. <clears throat> from a, from a man's judge perspective. People as judge well. us by what we're wearing. Our feelings about ourselves are changed when Carolyn can help yes. define and redefine, but not ruin your soul by putting yes. these colors and clothes on you. Yes, people are transformed within as well as without. Carolyn, you've done a lot of makeovers. Mm -hmm. Tell us one particular person that stands out that was totally transformed from the inside out. Well, we did this one lady who had worked at St. Jude, was so corporate lifestyle, and she had retired to take care of her husband because he had become ill. And so the, her entire existence now was taking care of her husband, once in a while babysitting grandchildren, and mm -hmm. her release was working in the flower garden. Right. She had relegated her life to sweatpants and mm -hmm. a baseball hat. Mm -hmm. That happens a lot. And that was her entire life. So when her mm -hmm. friends called to go to lunch, she didn't want to go do that because she just had mm -hmm. sweatpants, sweatshirts, and baseball hats. So we uh, set her up and we put her in Not Your Daughter's Jeans, which mm -hmm. Those are fantastic jeans for women. They're made for women, not for teenage girls or for men. Right. <laughs> They're made for women. Right. And yes. um, and just a a, a t-shirt that had a matching jacket. Mm -hmm. And we told her, said for in the house, the jeans and the t-shirt. Mm -hmm. And then when your friends call, you throw the jacket on. And so you, you go made out it for lunch. seamless. She made it and effortless. She mm -hmm. was crying. Mm -hmm. 
she cried at East Memphis, and I'm going to start crying. She cried at East Memphis Aesthetics at whenever they were doing the final makeover and doing her makeup, and uh, the makeup artist had to sit back and let her stop crying, then dab her eyes, and, and that then makes do it, it again. worthwhile. And what you, you just, you know, and and talking about your genuine smiles. I mean, she just, she was yeah. just. I, I can remember the, the after picture where she's grasping that hat, that big, big, beautiful brim Sophia Loren like hat <laughs> sure, that they were get, that they gave her to work in the garden with instead of the baseball <laughs> oh. hats, yeah. and she's just gripping that and just grinning from ear to ear. And right. then we had one who. The, the entire photo session, all she could do was laugh. Claude, the photographer, he just kept laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, laughter is contagious. So everybody in the room is laughing, and and this beautiful picture of her, she, you know, her husband was coming home from Iraq, and when he'd last seen her, she was eight, uh -huh. seven months pregnant, and then they let him come oh. home, and she would right when she had the baby so she was still you know sure. that and now that oh, she I had lost everything <laughs> and he came home and she wanted to greet him at the airport oh, with a new her what a beautiful story and so she just was just she couldn't stop laughing in the studio it was awesome so we've seen some wonderful and, and tears yes. oh we've seen tears sure happy sure. tears happy have tears. you been in on any of the segments as as Carolyn is doing this and going through the process of putting this on paper or do you get it once it, it comes to your desk well, we uh, both, we have worked okay. together before on makeovers, and sometimes I'm back in the studio and, and I get right. to talk to the people, and that's fun. And I get a lot, I, mostly I see it when it comes in and I edit sure. it and, and uh, uh, rewrite it and, we, and send it on. Right. Um, what, uh, what strikes me about what we do here very often mm -hmm. is how much people can do with their figures. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to have a perfect figure to look a, a whole lot better. Um, mm -hmm. you, you, you can, there's so much that can be done to balance your figure. If you're top heavy, you can, you can, you can, you can balance it with, with a wider hemline mm -hmm. down at the bottom. I think that's a great tip, and we're going to go to each of you for your last minute, literally, last minute tips uh, for the viewers right now. When it comes to looking good, Carolyn, what would your tip be for the viewers? My tip would be um, that what you wear is who you are and how you act. And it's been proven now with business casual out long enough that studies can be done. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it's been proven here at FedEx. Uh, we had a FedEx manager mm -hmm. who said specifically they came in and they wanted to do a second jeans day because they were behind on their uh, donations and so mm -hmm. that's how they do their donations. You pay money, you can wear jeans. Mm -hmm. And the manager wrote the VP and said, in that case, can I just give the people who pay for two jeans days the entire day off? And they said, why? He said, because I get half a performance when they wear jeans. And I lose, I can see. I how even that would lose happen. performance from other people in the office because mm -hmm. they're flitting around the office socializing. <laughs> so if you're going to let them wear jeans two days in a row, I'm losing one full day of productivity plus another third day for all the people that didn't wear jeans. Right. So if I let them stay home, I just lose one full day instead of one and a half full days. And so they didn't have the second jeans That's day. That's an inter the interesting VP, perspective. The VP said, no, we're not doing another jeans day. So right. you act the way you are. So let's go to you, Deborah, for the last minute tip. Okay, the last minute tip. Um, laughter is to the soul what soap is for the body. Mm -hmm. And it's cleansing. I like that. It's cleansing. And if what you're doing and how you're dressing and the way you're feeling doesn't make you laugh and you can't feel good about yourself, there's something wrong. You got to do what you like and like what you do. That's a great way to end this. Do what you like and like what you do. Thank, Thank you. you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you to the panelists for being with us. Carolyn Bindle, fashionacademy.biz, Deborah Norwood, and your web address is worldlaughtertour.com, mm -hmm. and Barbara Bradley, commercialappeal.com. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for taking time to bring everyone together. That's what we're doing here at Business Over Coffee International. I am Sherry Henley, founder of BOCI. You can find me at sherryhenley.com. We work with professionals who want to optimize their business through three things, social media, educational exchange, and networking events. We are bringing everyone together with connections, collaboration, exposure, and business. Remember, bring everyone together. Thank you.